Hi, welcome to Simply Nash Media. Today we're going to take a look at the new QSAN U300 P21 C316. This is a 3U 16 bay NAS. It also comes in a 4U 24 bay NAS as well if you need the extra capacity. Keep in mind you can also buy JBOD expansion units. This unit and the 4U 24 both support up to 192 hard drives once expansion units have been added on. Um, this model specifically comes with two processors, you can decide whether you need an i3 processor, whether you need an Intel Xeon E3 processor. Of course, depending on what applications you're deciding to use the NAS for. Um, if you are going to use it for virtualization um, and more data intensive tasks, we of course recommend the Xeon processor. Aside from that, general SMB file sharing and centralizing your storage, the i3 processor is ample. Um, you get two RAM configurations, 16 gig and 32 gig. Now, really that's it in terms of customizing your hardware. There's a lot of other hardware involved, which we'll talk about when we switch the unit around to the back and show you. Um, just generally taking a look at the front of the NAS. You've got your hard drive base, 16 of them there. Um, they do lock, so you have the option of locking the hard drive trays. On the left hand side, well my left hand side is on the right hand side of where you're looking at. You've got the power button, the mute button and the IP reset button. The IP reset button does nothing else but reset the IP address of the NAS. So if you do have an issue whereby you can't bring the NAS up anymore, you need to reset the network configurations, the IP reset is your best way. It will not hurt your radio, it will not touch your data, so it's okay, you don't have to worry about holding it down too long, etc. Um, that's generally the front of the NAS. We'll switch you around the back of the NAS and I'll come and show you. The NAS design at the back is slightly different to what we're used to on a NAS. Okay, taking a look at the back of the NAS, you have your two power supply fans here. Um, they apply ample coolage. You, these are modular, so if something does go wrong, you'll unscrew these and unscrew the four and pull out the um, fan. Secondly, we've got your PSUs here. Um, these are, again, just like any other QSAN that you've seen if you've watched our other videos, they are modular. I won't show you right now. This one comes with the added option of having a, um, I guess, a bracket to secure your power cable. Um, so that way you're, there's no way of your power cable being pulled out because this is a more heavy duty unit It does have a little bit more features in terms of securing things in place um, Again, that's a modular so if something does go wrong with one of the power supplies You can just pull it out and get it replaced. You don't have to send the unit in for repair by any means um, Taking starting from this side you've got a USB 3.0 slot here again, not a host connect a hard drive um, Send data to or from the NAS. That's really all you can do um, before I go into the networking protocols, down here you've got a, a SAS connector. This is for your um, JBOD boxes for your expansion. Um, specifically for this is the J1000Q from QSAN. Um, it will allow you to connect one to the head unit and then the subsequent rest of them will daisy chain on the JBOD box again itself. Um, we will eventually show you a JBOD box also and that way you can see the configuration there. Um, but that's that's basically all that's reserved for. It's just a slot for your expansion. It will let you know if there's link and whether there's um whether the JBOD box is currently accessing the NAS or not. That way you know whether you can shut one down. Um, taking a look at your network configurations, you have ample one gig iSCSI ports here. Um, they can of course be used for network access as well as iSCSI. There's seven of those. Um, they are RJ45 Cat5 V um, certified. Uh, QSAT does give you cables with this. Um, taking a look. They'll give you a CAT 6A cable. Um, they give you four of these. They can be back used as the RJ45 as well. The main reason for giving you a CAT 6A cable is here on this specific model you have RJ45 base T 10 gig. Um, again that's self-explanatory it's 10 gig. Uh, 10 gig connection these can be used as iSCSI as well as network access again. There are there is a second model with the optional of how instead of having base T if your infrastructure accepts SFP plus you can have that connection instead. Um, that's generally the back of the NAS. One more thing that I want to show you that no other NASes do is the advantage of the QSAM is this is just what we call a single controller NAS. Um, a controller is your motherboard. So any single controller NAS or has the option of being, of being able to remove the motherboard completely from the NAS. Now this is great if you need to do any repairs to the motherboard. There is also a secondary reason for this. Every single controller NAS that you buy, you have the option of upgrading them to a dual controller. Um, dual controller will allow you to have HA capability on the NAS built into one box. So 
it's, it's a great option if you're not looking immediately for HA, you can later on. They just secure nice and easy again, you plug it back in, and you'll, you'll secure it. I don't want to come around the front and block your view, so I won't. Um, but it's very easy to secure, pull out, and of course you'll just lock it back into place. Everything works absolutely fine, so it's a nice modular connection. Um, this allows you to get repairs done to your motherboard without having to pick up a whole unit and send it off with all your data on the hard drives. It also allows you to upgrade to the dual controller method if you haven't bought HA immediately off the cuff. Um, we'll bring you back around to the front and you can take a look. Um, we'll discuss a little bit more further about the features of the NAS. Okay, that was generally looking at the back of the QSAN U300. Speaking a little bit more about the features, we did show you that controller that pulls out. Um, that controller will allow you to have redundant controllers within the NAS. You don't get true HA on this NAS. There are HA compat capable NASs that QSAN sell. We'll cover that in another video. Uh, but the redundancy just basically means if one of the motherboards dies, the second one takes over. You don't have downtime. Down no downtime is always great. Um, so from that aspect, that's what that extra controller will do. Um, there are two things that I didn't show you at the back that I will quickly mention. On the actual controller that is removable, that module, there's an option for a serial port for a console and a serial port for UPS for UPSs such as EPC that do support serial connection. So you do have the option of doing that. This doesn't have any VGA slots or any HDMI slots, but console is still available if you have a serial port. Typically in a Linux house that we do use consoles in, we will have a serial port available for console access. Um, the console on this doesn't allow you access to your web UI like the U2, U221 that we mentioned before. Um, it just allows you shell access, so you don't have to SSH in. Um, you can run certain commands. They are available on our website once we've got our knowledge base up. So give us about a month or so, everything will be up there. Um, it'll allow you to download your, your um, debug file to USB. Um, just check the IP configuration of the NAS, make sure everything's okay running. Um, you can of course do this over SSH as well, so you don't necessarily have to use console view at all. Um, again, just generally summating this model here, comes with two configurations. You get the i3 processor and the Xeon processor. This is VMware and Citrix ready. Um, so it's ready for those environments, ready to rock and roll. You can use iSCART. You can use this as an IP SAN again, and a NAS, and again, cloud storage. So it's again a three-in-one solution. Uh, much cheaper than buying, let's say, a NetApp or an EMC NAS. It does give you the same type of throughput if you do go for the Xeon processor. Again, this one does support SSD caching also, four SSDs for Four SSDs for write and two SSDs for read. Um, the SSDs, that being said, because now we're on a bigger unit, let's talk a little bit more in depth about the SSDs. The SSD caching does only sit on specific RAID groups. So if you've maxed out your SSDs and decided you've put six in, you can only assign those to one RAID group. So if you've created multiple RAID groups, you will need other SSDs for SSD caching there. So what we recommend is, of course, create all your RAID groups first and then decide what volume is being used for what and whether that needs the boost of the SSD cache. Um, of course, you can always buy your SSDs ready configured from us and then move them around on the RAID groups that you want. You can deattach them and reattach them at ease without destroying a RAID array. They are not part of the RAID array, they just sit on top for performance space. Um, aside from that, that is the, the QSAN U300. <coughs> Remember, we've looked at the 16 bay today, it comes in a 24 bay, which is slightly higher because we move up to a 4U NAS. Um, if you have any other questions, always give us a call, 407-960-4690. Alternatively, you can send us an email, sales at simplynas.com. We're always happy to answer your questions. Please do like this video and subscribe to our channel. That way you get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you very much for joining us and have a wonderful day.